Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Late Night with the Devil. This was directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns, Cairns? I, I don't know. And as you guys know, I'm always on the lookout for interesting horror films, independent horror films, and just looking at the, at the poster for this alone, you know, it seemed like it fit the bill. This film uses a very clever gimmick as the way of framing the entire story, and that is what makes it feel original, that's what makes it feel interesting. This movie begins with a lot of like historical footage of like mid-20th century American chaos, and then it starts to veer into like imitation uh, footage. All this imagery that is very, you know, Rosemary's Baby in style, so very occult folk horror type callbacks. And then we're seeing like pagan ritual insinuations, bohemian grove type stuff. It's not even five minutes into the film and it's already, you know, showing this kind of stuff. So instantly it's quite clear that you know, this movie is going for that like underground cult horror type of flair with all the Rosemary's Baby exorcist type of uh, influences one could muster. And as time goes on, Jack Delroy's ratings start to dip lower and lower and lower. But you know, it kind of makes sense because of just like the sensationalism that was on TV at the time, kind of filtering the world's upheavals, politics. It's very numbing to an audience. And so it's like these people feel like they have to boost the ratings and they have to go for the jugular. And so he is pushing his show as far as he possibly can. So for the Halloween episode, he decides to invite a possessed girl on the show so he can do a live interview. That kind of premise, weirdly, on talk shows at the time was not that uncommon. Selling his soul to the devil, essentially, in order to gain the prestige of the number one spot to be the late night king. Um, but it's the way that the movie goes about presenting the tension of all of this that I think is really fun. It makes the entire film in the style of the 1970s broadcast, and in the case of this movie, it is Late Night with Jack Delroy, the Halloween episode. During the commercial breaks, they will go backstage and then they start to continue the movie, but in the style of like a behind the scenes black and white documentary. So that way you can see the uh, tensions unfold in real time, but again, you know, more in the shadows. I think initially, there is a, a ton to like here. These two directors, I think, are very creative. They, they're they clearly bored with just the packaging of like these exorcist type horror movies. And so, yeah, they want to put a spin on it. And clearly they are confident in their pop culture history references to where they feel like they can stretch this gimmick out convincingly. I myself may not have been completely convinced by it all the way through, but I did find it refreshing. Because yes, just like a real talk show, you know, sometimes it does meander. Sometimes one guest may not be as interesting as the next one. So you kind of, you might zone out a little bit, but there's something about that where it's like, I just have to know where this is going to go. They do a pretty good job with the talk show film set so far as making it look like that old variety show uh, setup. They attempt to give it kind of the vintage look, the burnt oranges and the yellows and the browns. It's very, you know, it reminds me of the Dick Cavett show, which is a show I, I absolutely adore. And, you know, like I said, so far as the pop culture references are concerned, I think they, they do it pretty well. It's just, I don't think it's quite on the level of specificity that, that it needs to be. If you're going to try to put this type of spin on things, I don't think you can just commit to it 100%. You've got to commit to it 110% because this is a lot harder to pull off. It's a lot harder to fool audiences when you have that novelty aspect. Yes, at first glance, when you're kind of skimming the film, it reminds me of like when you're walking on some studio back lot, maybe they're shooting a, a big Western or something, and maybe it looks really, really good. The exteriors, like the saloon and everything, it feels like I'm transported in time, but then, you know, we all know if we go behind it that all of the uh, interiors are going to be completely hollow. It's just the outdoor. And that's kind of the feeling that this film gives me. Again, very convincing on the outside, but I think when you sink your teeth into it, it does become a little bit hollow because I think 1970s occult type horror, it depends on those textures, that dirty kind of aged look. I think a, a director like Anna Biller would do wonders with a premise like this where, you know, it's not, it doesn't just have the flavorings of that underground cult type of movie, but it really like digs its heels in and it's marinated there. The detail in her movies and just her encyclopedic knowledge of this particular era and the ones before it is insane. Another thing I couldn't help but think about during this was a short film that came out, one of those uh, Adult Swim infomercials maybe 10 years ago, it was called Too Many Cooks. That one is more in the style of like a 1980s style sitcom, but I, I think it's more interesting. I think it feels uh, more like the fully realized version of what I think Late Night with the Devil wants to be. In that one, it is like this psychedelic sludge and it slowly turns and you are just plunged into the unsettling terror and you don't see the string. So therefore it's like you can really buy into the world building. And you know, when I look at Late Night with the Devil, by contrast, I don't think they always think through not only the aesthetic, but also the concepts. Part of me wishes that the movie had stayed in that live TV show format 
for the majority of the movie rather than kind of breaking, you know, behind the scenes in the commercial breaks to, you know, the documentary stuff. I kind of would have liked to see them for the most part on stage the whole time, even during uh, the commercial break so that you could feel more trapped in the novelty of this this whole experiment. And as that thread continues, it's like you're wondering, is this ever going to break into something else? Is it ever going to become cinematic? But also just the black and white stuff, you know, it's meant obviously to show the subtextual stuff, all the, you know, like the tensions that are rising behind the scenes of this whole thing. But, you know, a lot of it feels very fake. It feels forced. And I think authenticity or like the, at least trying to appear authentic is very important when you're doing found footage movies or like mockumentary type stuff. But here it's like all the juicy dramatic conversations just conveniently all happen right in the commercial breaks of the show. And it's just, yeah, I didn't buy into it. But let me tell you, if you cast appropriately, that can solve a lot of the problems of your movie. And I think in this case, they nailed it so far as casting uh, Jack Delroy. What an inspired choice in David Desmulchen. You know, he's a he's more of a character actor and he's always playing like these really creepy, dark characters in a lot bigger films. So to see him at the forefront of this one, playing this like straight-laced talk show host who's supposed to be like the poster child for like Americana suburban appeal, you know, it's not what I would think of. But I think he's amazing just because he already has almost like blackness in his eyes, a real mysteriousness to him where you're just like, who is this guy? What is he hiding? He does really well at playing a talk show host. And I think a lot of that is because he's kind of embodying more of the self-deprecating humor of somebody like a Conan O'Brien, we will say. But there's this undercurrent of melancholy in him. And we know at the beginning of the movie, they set his character up. We know something very tragic has happened to him. So I feel like you don't need to go behind the scenes and do all of that type of stuff. I feel like he says so much just with his face. They have guests on this show, obviously, and it's supposed to lead up to the big, you know, possession section, which is crucial but this is another part of things that I struggled with because every guest that comes on the show is meant to escalate the tension just a little bit more. But sometimes I don't feel uh, convinced by the conversations the guests are having on the show. As an example, uh, Ian Bliss, he, he plays like the skeptic of the group, the guy that's like, no, this is a fraud. There is no possession. It's TV, folks. This is all an illusion. And yes, of course, it makes sense to have a skeptic in this type of movie, but you know, does it have to be so ham-fisted? It, it reminded me of, of that episode in Dick Cavett uh, many years ago where, you know, was it Norman Mailer who was being kind of an asshole and it made, you know, the tensions rise in the room. And I guess I'm looking for more nuance in like an unplanned live television type of situation, even, you know, when you have these campy late night personas. The movie does eventually break from its like internal logic of the live TV format and it starts to go into Jack Delroy's mind and it's like in this weird loop. He's very lost to the illusion and they do a similar sort of thing in Too Many Cooks, which I, you know, I said I would probably come back to. I prefer the descent into madness for Too Many Cooks because I feel like the themes are really brought out quite strongly there. The way that we try to break from these illusions that are projected onto us by pop culture in order to find, you know, ourselves, our individuality, and yet it's like this vicious cycle because we are so defined by the pop culture of our era. We are so defined by the subliminal messaging of everything. So it's like this nightmare of like, where, who am I? Where does the dream end and where do I begin? And the way that they weave in and out of that, you know, it's like this weird rippling effect in Too Many Cooks. I, it's claustrophobic. And I think that with Late Night with the Devil in the third act in particular, especially in the last maybe 10 minutes, I think they really want to take you on a wild ride that's kind of similar. And I'm, I'm certainly digging the impulse, but <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's not quite there and it really needs to be in order for it to be effective. All that satanic bohemian grove stuff, I think it should be unleashed here, but it feels too unimaginative, I think, for a final flight. It feels like somebody saw Rosemary's Baby maybe a couple of times and was like, I got this. This felt like some sort of performed pagan ritual, but like by community theater as one does. But the ending is also, you know, it's muddled and I struggled to understand it so far as, I just don't think that it was properly conveyed to the audience what is supposed to be going on. I'm trying to understand still how the final moment, the final shot, you know what I'm talking about, is, is achieved so far as what the audience is seeing from the live TV perspective. Because once we break from that, we don't return to it. So that kind of becomes a problem. We're in Jack's mind, but it's like, how is he lured in to make the sacrifice? Is this like a, a hypnosis? Is the audience also under the hypnosis? You know, they hint at that, you know, big time in the film. This film is a mixed bag and it is frustrating because it is 
very close to committing. It is, it is so close, but just not close enough. The premise is interesting and the gimmick didn't wear too thin. It's original, it's well made, it has a very strong uh, performance at the center of it. I could see this film being passed around for a while. I just, you know, had it made that extra leap, I think this could have absolutely been a masterpiece. Even if I'm saying a lot of negative things about it, it means I was emotionally invested. So yes, I consider that to be a good thing. I know a lot of people have already seen this, but this is a perfect movie to watch for Halloween if you haven't already. But that is my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. It is deepfocuslens.com. I'm an artist. I do commission portraits and I sell prints of my work. If that is something that you're interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a, a question about a commission or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who are great. Guys, thank you so much for your support. Welcome to all the new members. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below, as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch my videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.